Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Short Story Tuesday, and I have a bit of an interesting one for you today. Uh, It is a short story about a strange oasis on the side of the road. I am referring to The Other Side of the Hedge by E.M. Forster, which was published in 1911. For those who don't know, E.M. Forster was a British author uh, known for writing books, short stories, novellas, uh, film scripts of all things, among many other uh, pieces of work. Uh, He wrote Howard's End, as well as A Room with a View, and A Passage to India, I think is what it's called, uh, as well as a number of other short stories and whatnot, including what I'm talking about today. Uh, He was very well regarded for his work, it being uh, critically acclaimed even during his time. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, it's, it's not the reason I'm talking about him today. It was just, it just turns out it was by chance. Um, but um, he, he was also gay. Like this wasn't publicly known, but it was privately known. And uh, other people found out as time went on. But uh, it, it, um, there, it might have been somewhat influential in what he was talking about. Uh, because he also he frequently wrote about class, you know, and and in, in, in the United Kingdom as well as social social conventions and and other such things. Uh, so um, I should probably check out more of his work in the future, given that I like this short story so much. But it's also possible that it might be too British for me, <laughs> as I as I have a couple problems with with British authors, uh, at least those that I've read in the past. But I'd be willing to give it a chance based on this short story alone. And so, without further ado, let's talk about the other side of the hedge. I will do a summary, a little bit, a bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So The Other Side of the Hedge focuses on an unnamed narrator uh, walking uh, along a highway. They're being passed by other people. At first, I thought this was a bit of like a marathon or something like that. Although that wouldn't make sense because I didn't, I, I didn't think they would do as many of those, you know, in the early 1900s. But uh, that's what that's what it certainly seems like. And as the narrator is walking, they feel exhausted and they fall down on, um, on the side of the road while people continue to pass them. Uh, and while they're on the ground, they, they feel like cool air from a, a nearby hedge and they look into it and see uh, an unusual space. So they, they walk through the hedge and they see people relaxing. Uh, they, they feel a certain sense of like, I got to move on. I got to keep going. But, um, like the people who are relaxing, uh, you know, encourage them to relax. And he's like, where does it, where does this lead to? Where does this hedge go to? And a person laughs and says, nowhere in particular. And that's probably like the best thing about it. Uh, the, again, the narrator wants to continue and they're quite surprised by seeing, uh, like, some of their friends, some some people they know in this this area, uh, as um, you know, you would think that they have other other better things to do, uh, but apparently they don't. Uh, and they talk with with a, a certain wise person who's in this area, telling them that there's no one else, there's only them, and that you have to pause every so often um, uh, rather than just simply continuing, and eventually the end will arise. Uh, and you have to travel down a certain road or something like that. Uh, and um, th- the narrator is taken aback and, and somewhat confused by what all this conversation means. As the story comes to a close, the narrator sees a man with a scythe. I wonder what that could mean. Uh, and the, the man is also carrying a drink with him. Uh, and the, na- the narrator grabs the drink and you know, proceeds to drink it, uh, just taking it out of out of their hands without knowing what's in it, noting that it's it's not any different from beer. Uh, however, they begin to feel very strange, and they fall into a bit of a, a sleep like state, uh, and they feel as though their uh, their brother is laying them to to rest to sleep, uh, and that's where the story ends. There, in terms of analysis, there is quite a bit worth talking about, even though this is just 
just like a five page story. Again, this is probably one of those short stories that is very open to interpretation and you can take it line by line or paragraph by paragraph because Forster fills it with, with quite a bit uh, to think about. And uh, it's, it's, there's probably things that I, I won't catch in this review, but I encourage you to consider, you know, everything about this, this book or the short story if you, uh, if you, if you read it or you haven't read it already. Uh, one of the ideas that Forrester is, is talking about here is that of the path or life or the journey. Uh, cause you know, people say that, uh, life is all about the journey, not the destination. Uh, but I, I think Forrester has a few issues with, with that kind of idea because, uh, he seems to note that like, he may, like for this person in particular, the narrator, like it's all about the journey. Like there's no pausing or relaxing. The only thing you can do is go on this journey of, of life. And the narrator notes that the humans are, are constantly continuing, proceeding ever forth, uh, maybe without really thinking about what they are, are really going forward into. There's an interesting quote that I would like to read to you from this. I amused him by stopping suddenly and saying disconsolately, this is perfectly terrible. One cannot advance. One cannot progress. Now we of the road. Yes, I know. I was going to say we advance continually. I know. We are always learning, expanding, developing. Why, even in my short life, I have seen a great deal of advance. The Transvaal War, the fiscal question, Christian science, radium here, for example. And the narrator goes on and, and he's even cut off at several points. Uh, but there you see in the quote, the, the narrator is talking about moving forward, that life is is a march and you proceed forward at a at a constant rate without stopping to think about really anything that you've that you've, you, you've done, uh, it, that it's just, you know, an endless march, it, it would seem. And that's kind of represented by the continuous road that the narrator is traveling upon at the beginning of the story, uh, not really considering, you know, where they're going. And they even say their pedometer is 25, whether that means the years that they've traveled or just how far they've been going, that that shows that uh, life is is kind of this journey, this, um, this, this, mark, again, constant march forward. And you could argue that the hedge is kind of a break, a place for people to stop, consider life, ponder before you move on. And uh, like that, I think that's one interpretation of what this hedge, this, this uh, sort of oasis is. Uh, and I think if you do that, then you could say that, uh, like if you interpret it that way, you could say that Forster wants us to slow down, that we can march through life and that progress can be great and wonderful, but you have to stop and enjoy life every so often. Uh, you can't just, you know, just constantly go through without thinking about what you've gone through. Uh, that's not that's not really a way to live. That's kind of stressful, and as the um, as the narrator even notes, like you're gonna you're gonna pass out from this from exhaustion uh, sooner or later. And so I, I feel like that's a pretty fair message for Forrester to send across there. However, that is not the only message that Forrester is sending. Uh, the other message, the other theme that I think you could take from this is that of death. Uh, the narrator uh, collapses at the beginning of the story and their journey into the hedge, um, like that, that all can be seen as a form of, of death. Like the, you could say that the narrator kind of dies or uh, on their meta metaphorical kind of journey on this road, uh, you could say that they, they that their uh, sort of trip, their, their journey has ended. And so now they've entered into the hedge uh, as a way to ponder whether they should move on to what's next, like the afterlife, or, you know, get back on the road if there's ever that, that possibility. You could argue that the guide who kind of talks to the narrator and tries to tell him, you know, what's going to happen next and uh, the the sort of state of humanity and, and where they come from and where they are now, uh, you could argue that that guide is kind of God. Um, or at least an angel of some sort, telling the narrator, you know, this is what has happened. This is what your life means in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and this is what comes afterwards. And I, I think that, that that's really beautiful. Although the narrator, the, I think it's a bit unclear who exactly this guide is, but they are kind of sort of a, a spiritual uh, sort of 
died in, in a way. Like what happens afterwards, telling the, try, just trying to help uh, the narrator make sense of it all, although he is is still slightly confused, and, and I am slightly confused as he's talking to this person. Uh, but I think a very clear example of how this is death is the man with the scythe. That's kind of hard to ignore. Of course, death is commonly depicted with the scythe, at least in, in Western cultures. Uh, and, you know, he's he's wandering around, and presumably Death is here to finally claim this man, provided he wants to die. I think Death gives the uh, the man an option, uh, which is represented by the, the drink that the man has. Like, he, he can choose to imbibe it and, and pass on, or he can continue back outside of the hedge along this road. I, I, I do think he's given some choice there, uh, and it's possible that the, the man is, is dying young, or is has a near death experience that he can choose to you know give into or or try to fight in some way uh, and, and again another clear example of this is the narrator kind of lowered into the ground um, which they, which they say by their brother it's possible the brother is dead and they're um, they're they're both being put to rest in some kind of metaphorical way or it, it just the the narrator is conscious of their uh, of a funeral taking place on another plane it's it is it is a bit unclear but um I, I think there's a lot of room for this interpretation of of death happening here and it this certainly isn't the first oh surprise you you were actually dead the whole time or this is a metaphor for death kind of short story uh but i do like how forrester gets at um uh, you know, the idea of death and uh, sort of representing it through this this hedge in a way that other authors haven't really done. So I got to give them credit there. I will just note um, my, my one problem with this story is it does feel a little too short. I feel like it could have been further developed, a little bit more added to, but um, for what it is, like it, it's it's fine. Like I, I, I also feel like if you added more to it, like it, the story would just kind of drone on and at a certain point it's like, we get it. We, we know exactly what you're trying to say, Forrester. So as short as it is, it kind of works there, but it, this, I, I feel like more. this could have been expanded on in a, in a few more ways. Anyway, those are my thoughts on The Other Side of the Hedge by Ian Forster. A pretty solid short story, one that I definitely recommend that you go out and, and read, especially if you haven't read Ian e. Forster before, as he is a, a bit of a classic author. Um, so yeah, I'll put a link to it in the description. Go ahead and read it and let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm certainly hoping to find more Ian e. Forster in my, uh, in my TBR down the road. Uh, so that should be quite fun. Uh, otherwise, you know, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe uh, so that more people can find out about Forrester as well as this short story. Um, or, you know, just, you know, um, join the Discord if you're interested in talking about books or movies or, or any other random things. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and potentially near-death travels. Farewell.